This is Dr. Frederick just talking about the uh, chi-square test. The chi-square test is one of the most commonly used uh, statistical tests that we have um, because many of our analyses deal with nominal data. It's a very fast, easy to compute little test. It's not very powerful um, in, in, with respect to something like a t-test uh, or an ANOVA. Um, but it's, uh, it will give us some information that we want. So here we have a situation where we have two nominal variables. We have variables that are not even ordinal. Uh, they're just groups, Republicans or Democrats. doesn't tell us anything other than which group you're in. And that's the characteristic of a nominal data. Uh, here's another nom set of nominal variables, uh, yes and no. Uh, what was the outcome, yes or no? Uh, plus or minus or there or not there, present, absent, just nominal characteristics. And, and what we want to know is, is there some sort of uh, expected pattern um, based on the nature of the variables, uh, or is this just a random distribution uh, or something that's really not that much different from random? So we, we have this outcome. To evaluate this outcome, uh, we need to make another table which is the table of expected values. The way we do that is we say, okay, we'll take the observed values that we have, uh, we'll take the row total, multiply it by column total. So for cell 1 here, what's row? Row 1, column 1. And so we have for cell 1, 1, we're looking at Republicans and yes. The row total is 40, the column total is 35, we multiply the row total by the column total. That's this right here. Then divide by n. Well, what's n? n is 65. 15 plus 25 is 40 plus 20 is 60 plus 5 is 65. So 40 times 35 divided by 65 gives us what we expect to see here given this outcome if there is no relationship between the variables. We just repeat this four times. It's very much like doing a variance. We just, um, uh, well, not yet. It's not yet like doing a variance, but we're setting up to do something like a variance, uh, which is getting a value four times observed versus expected. Okay? It's like a variance when uh, you're doing your, your deviation column in computing. A variance, you, you start with the observed value, next column is mean. Third column is difference value, which is what we're going to do next. So now we're going to compare observed versus expected. We have this formula right here to do chi-square. Take the observed value, subtract the expected value, square it. That's reminiscent of doing the variance, right? And then what are we going to divide by? The expected value. And so we get something like this. Our expected value is 21.5, our observed value was 15. 21.5 minus 15 squared divided by 21.5. Let's just do that real quick. Okay. We have 21.5 minus 15. That's 6.5. We're going to multiply it times 6.5. Do 42.25. We're going to do, uh, divide that by 21.5, and we get 1.967, or 1.97. There's our value right there. We'll do that again. We have, in the next cell, 18.5 expected, 25 observed. We'll do our little calculation there. And we'll do it four times, one for each cell. So we get 1.97 plus these other three values. And we get a chi-square of 11.04. Now we're going to compare that to a tabled value, and the tabled value is if chi-square was computed when the null hypothesis was true, which is there was no relationship between two variables, what value would be extreme? And we're going to use alpha equals 0.05, and we're going to find that the value is 3.84. Here's the table. Here's the degrees of freedom here. Here's our alpha equals 
and we see that 5% of the time a chi-square value will be 3.84 or lower when the null hypothesis is true. Our value is very much higher than 3.84, so we say, hmm, that's unexpected to see when the null hypothesis is true. I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. Look, note, that's just, you know, when you hear the right, as your alphas get more and more extreme, you know, your chi-squares under the normal distribution, or normal hy uh, null hypothesis get larger and larger. It's very unlikely to see 10.83 only only one one thousandth of a time. So, you, know, you get an idea of what the tabled values are telling you. It's what will you see 3.84 or lower 5% of the time. Anything higher than that is unlikely, therefore, reject the null hypothesis. Now, when you do things by hand, you, you get different than if you do it by software. I get 11.18 by software. Uh, this is a very common software program. Uh, Excel will do this for you. Uh, I went and uh, closed my table out. I'm sorry, but how do you compute the degrees of freedom? It's just the number of rows, minus 1, times the number of columns, minus 1, 1, times 1, 2 rows, two t minus 1 is 1, 2 columns, 2 minus 1 times 2 minus 1 is 1. We found that because we reject the null hypothesis, we determine that there was a significant difference between Republicans and Democrats on this issue. By the way, I have no idea where these uh, examples came from. This is Ms. Bell. Okay. Now, the chi-square test is very commonly used, um, but it's not, it's not a very powerful test. It just tells you when things are unlikely to have occurred, but it doesn't really tell you the degree of relationship uh, that exists there. We don't really know uh, how much different Republicans and Democrats are on the respect of whether 12-year-olds should uh, be able to vote or not. Uh, very, very silly example, but the way you do that is to compute something called a phi or phi coefficient, and it looks like that. Right. It has this little circle with a line drawn through it. And, and the way you do it is you, in, in everything you're ever going to do, it's just chi-square divided by n, the number of people in the sample. In the second example, or whatever question this is in your worksheet, you have to figure out how many groups you have. In this example, there was three groups. And so uh, even though your book is not clear on this, uh, there has to be a multiplier down here, the number of groups minus 1. So in this example, it's 40 times 2, the number of people times 2 groups. Uh, gives you the phi coefficient of 0.392. We compare that to a table and decide that we have a medium effect. Now, this is directly translatable to the Cohen's uh, D that you did, I think, in week 4. All sorts of questions you can ask with the chi-square. Here's one where it asks, um, you know, what's the probability that, that these values of choice for vacation destinations happen by chance? And that's what you're evaluating. Uh, the chi-square was 13.97 with 2 degrees of freedom, or whatever, you know, 2 degrees of freedom, you get 5.99. No, very unlikely to have occurred by chance. So, that's the chi-square. And uh, we have another test to do this week, and I'll, I'll do a little lecture on that.